Instagram.com. Can taking supplemental vitamin D prevent you from getting autoimmune diseases? There's a big paper, and we're going to review it, plus some of my thoughts. As many of you know, we've been talking about vitamin D at MedCram since March of 2020, and we even did a big in-depth review of vitamin D in COVID-19 about a year ago, which got over 12 million views. We'll put a link at the top of the page if you want to remind yourself, but in that review, we talked about a number of the studies that showed that there was an association with vitamin D deficiency and worse outcomes in COVID-19. There was also a long-term randomized placebo-controlled trial meta-analysis that showed that long-term supplementation could reduce acute chest infections. Today, however, I want to concentrate on this paper that was just published in the British Medical Journal from a group at Harvard titled Vitamin D and Marine Omega-3 Fatty Acid Supplementation and Incident Autoimmune Disease, Vital Randomized Controlled Trial. So this was a randomized, double-blinded, prospective, placebo-controlled trial. And it was followed for over five years, and the total number of people in the study was 25,871 people in the United States. And what they wanted to do was to prospectively put them on vitamin D at 2,000 international units, or placebo, which in this case was soybean oil, and put them on omega-3 fatty acids, or placebo, which in this case was olive oil. And the amount of omega-3 fatty acids specifically was one gram per day. And for those who are interested, it was 460 milligrams of eicosapentaenoic acid and 380 milligrams of decosahexaenoic acid. And so in terms of the vitamin D study, they had 12,927 subjects that had gotten vitamin D and 12,944 that got placebo. As part of that study, half also were getting omega-3 fatty acids to the tune of 12,933 and the placebo, which got 12,938. So they were able to simultaneously run both a randomized double-blinded placebo-controlled trial for vitamin D and also for omega-3 and also both and also neither. The following is really important because the inclusion criteria was very specific. These people could not be on any fish oil supplementation. And what was important was that they could get vitamin D in their diet, but only up to 800 international units per day which was actually pretty liberal because the USDA recommendation is only 600 international units per day. So this was a trial to see if going above and beyond the current recommendations of vitamin D supplementation, which we know are based on calcium metabolism, would improve the ability of the body to prevent autoimmune diseases. Because they were taking vitamin D, they also excluded people who were in renal failure, on hemodialysis, had high levels of calcium, had cirrhosis, or other serious illnesses. Now, what they did to follow up was they did a five-year questionnaire follow-up. The response rate, of course, is always a problem because if you lose a lot of subjects to follow up, then the results become less generalizable. However, in this case, the response rate was 93%, which was excellent. In terms of follow-up for mortality, 98%, which is excellent in terms of follow-up. In terms of adherence, because these subjects were given every month a set of capsules which looked identical, and they were followed up in terms of had they developed any autoimmune conditions, and the adherence, which was defined as taking at least two-thirds of the capsules that were given to them, was 81%. And of course, they were given a questionnaire to see whether or not any of them had developed rheumatoid arthritis, polymyalgia rheumatica, thyroiditis of any type, psoriasis, or any kind of inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, or ulcerative colitis. They were even given a space to write in a potential autoimmune condition 
And if they did, then they were asked to hand their charts over to the study coordinators who would then have a board-certified gastroenterologist, rheumatologist, or endocrinologist review the chart and see whether or not there was evidence of the patient's autoimmune condition. They even, at random, took a sampling of representative subjects from the groups and checked to actually make sure that vitamin D and omega-3 fatty acids increased in those that were on the supplementation. And what they found was that those that were taking vitamin D, on average, went from 29.8 nanograms per milliliter to an average of 41.8 nanograms per milliliter. So there was a substantial increase in vitamin D concentrations in a subgroup analysis. Also, in comparing those that were on the omega-3 fatty acids at one gram per day, they noted a 55% increase in the levels of omega-3 fatty acids in the blood tests in the group that was actually on the omega-3 fatty acids. So again, this is a randomized, placebo-controlled study. It was double-blinded. It was prospective. It's the best type of study that you can do in terms of evidence. It was very large with over 25,000 subjects. It was looked at for over five years. They had a very good response rate, very good follow-up rate. There was a pretty good adherence. And they were looking for very specific endpoints, which was autoimmune conditions. So the question is, is did vitamin D at 2,000 international units daily or omega-3 fatty acids at one gram per day make any difference in the prospective incidence of autoimmune diseases. So let's look first at vitamin D. And here you can clearly see all incident confirmed autoimmune diseases. So these are diseases that could be actually specifically confirmed. We can see over a five-year period of time that there was a reduction in the amount of autoimmune diseases in the vitamin D arm. And specifically, that was statistically significant over those five years with a p-value of 0.05, and the hazard ratio being 0.78, which means there was a 22% reduction in the incidence of autoimmune diseases in people who took 2,000 international units of vitamin D daily. Now, if we look at those where we added the probable autoimmune diseases to the all-incident confirmed, This still showed a numerical difference, but it lost statistical significance, as you can see here with a p-value of 0.09. Let's move on now to the omega-3 fatty acid component of the trial. And you can see here that those that were taking the omega-3 fatty acids in purple had numerically less than those that were taking placebo. But again, it did not reach statistical significance with a p-value of 0.19. This, of course, was for the confirmed diseases. Over here to the probable causes, if we add those in, we actually do reach statistical significance with a p-value of 0.04, with a hazard ratio of 0.82, translating into an 18% reduction in the incidence of autoimmune conditions when taking one gram a day of omega-3 fatty acids. The nice thing about this study is that we could actually look to see what component, either the omega-3 fatty acid or the vitamin D, was actually doing most of the heavy lifting. And this is the two by two factorial groups. And in this group, you can see here that the reference is the placebo, which is in pink. And you can see that here, the omega-3 placebo and the vitamin D placebo. And down here, you can see in this group you have the omega-3 placebo and the vitamin D placebo as reference. The next group is the omega-3 active and the vitamin D active. And as you can see up here, that is the dotted dark blue line. And that's this line here going through this line and area here. Now, what you can see here is in that hazard ratio, which was 0.69, that would translate into a 31% reduction in autoimmune diseases if somebody was taking vitamin D and also omega-3 fatty acids. And as you can see, since the confidence interval does not include unity or the number one, that is statistically significant. Now moving on, if we look at the omega-3 placebo and the vitamin D active, and that's going to be, as you can see here, the dark reddish line, That's this line moving up through here. You can see, again, a very similar reduction in autoimmune conditions, this time 32% reduction. 
and the confidence interval does not include the number one or unity, so therefore this is statistically significant. Finally, when we look at the omega-3 active and the vitamin D placebo, that is going to be this green arm, that seems to be the one here that is the lowest. However, interestingly, at the end of the study, it is actually the one that is the closest to the placebo slash placebo. And as a result of that, while there is still a reduction numerically, it does not reach statistical significance because this range includes the number one. And so based on these numbers, we would have to say that the vitamin D is the one doing the heavy lifting since the groups that include vitamin D show statistical significance in reducing the incidence prospectively of autoimmune conditions. When we throw in the probable in addition to the confirmed, as we've done before, you can see here that we reach statistical significance in each one of the three categories. Once again, the pink line is the reference range that is placebo and placebo. And in both the omega-3 active vitamin D active and the omega-3 placebo vitamin D active and the omega-3 active and the vitamin D placebo, we are seeing statistical significance in all three of those, as we can see, because all three do not include the number one. So as the authors state here in the discussion, in this large primary prevention trial in diverse older Americans, supplementation with vitamin D at a dose of 2,000 international units a day for approximately five years alone or in combination with one gram a day of omega-3 fatty acids led to a lower incidence of confirmed autoimmune disease than placebo. Supplementation with omega-3 fatty acids alone did not significantly lower incidence of autoimmune disease. However, when participants with probable autoimmune disease were included, Omega-3 fatty acid supplementation did reduce the rate by 18% compared with placebo, and a significant interaction was found with time, pointing to an increased effect and longer duration of supplementation. When only the last three years of the intervention were considered, the vitamin D group had 39% fewer participants with confirmed autoimmune disease than the placebo group, and that, folks, was very statistically significant at 0.005. The other finding that was very interesting was that this reduction in autoimmune diseases was dependent on the BMI of the subject. For instance, there was a 53% reduction in autoimmune diseases if the body mass index of the subject was 18. There was a 31% reduction in the incidence of autoimmune diseases if the body mass index was 25 and a non-statistical significant 10% reduction in the incidence of autoimmune diseases if the BMI was 30. So in other words, the higher the BMI, the less of an improvement that we see with vitamin D supplementation. And the authors did note that this observation that people with lower body mass index seem to benefit more from vitamin D supplementation has actually been seen before. They don't think it's dilutional, however, because when they changed it from 4,000 international units to 2,000 international units and vice versa, there was really no change. And so that would suggest that it's not dilutional. So what's really exciting about this study, in over 25,000 subjects, in a randomized placebo-controlled trial that was double-blinded, that supplementation with 2,000 international units of vitamin D daily for up to five years can reduce substantially the number of cases of autoimmune diseases. Now, this is not for everybody. You should check with your doctor first, but I can't help but think that this is really important for a number of reasons. Number one, this is above and beyond the USDA recommendation that we should be getting of vitamin D. The other aspect of this that's very interesting to me is if we look at the incidence and the prevalence of autoimmune conditions like multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, celiac disease, asthma, and Crohn's disease, they're all substantially increasing at a very alarming rate. And this is happening at a time where we spend only 7% of our time outside, as you can see here from the paper that we referenced in a previous video from Zimmerman and Ryder, showing very clearly that over the last 100 to 200 years, there's been a dramatic reduction in the amount of sunlight. And that sunlight is creative of not only vitamin D, but also near-infrared radiation. 
And so vitamin D may not only be a therapeutic intervention, but also a marker for how much sunlight somebody is getting as well. So all of this to say that you really should do three things. Number one, highly consider taking vitamin D supplementation. And before you do that, you really need to talk to your doctor and you need to watch our video on vitamin D supplementation that we referenced at the beginning. We'll put a link to it so that you can watch that. Number two, you really need to watch our video on light because vitamin D supplementation is not a substitute for getting good sun exposure. There are other things in sunlight other than vitamin D that could be very beneficial. And I highly recommend again that you watch our recently produced light video called Light as Medicine to get the full download on that. And then finally, number three, go over to our website and sign up at medcram.com. I don't know how many of these videos are gonna be left on YouTube and I wanna make sure that you're getting the up-to-date information. So if you want to make sure that you have all of the videos and access to them without commercials, please go to medcram.com and sign up there. It's free to do and you'll have access to all of these videos at medcram.com. Thanks for joining us, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.